Okay, last time we had started the uh, discussion of process costing, and we started with a basic illustration which involved the introduction of 1,000 units of a product into process B, uh, having already accumulated cost of $20,000 from the previous process, and accumulating an additional $10,000 worth of production costs during process B, so that the output to process C is the 1,000 units with a new total cost amount of $30,000, giving us an average cost per unit of $30. Now we want to take this story forward, and we want to begin with a formula today, which is the average cost per unit determination. The average cost per, per unit determination is uh, defined in this way, the total cost of inputs reduced by any scrap value obtained from rejected or defective units. That's the dollar amounts upstairs and below the denominator will have the number of units in question, number of units input into a process minus the normal loss. Let's uh, look at an example now which will um, incorporate these, these elements. If we look at uh, illustration two, for example, Suppose our 1,000 units going into a process we know um, are going to result uh, almost automatically or naturally um, in, in losing 10% of the input to um, losses, to, to being defective. That This is uh, an actually an anticipated and predictable rate of loss. The predictable expected rate of loss based on experience, based on uh, statistics um, and analysis of the past, this would be defined as our normal loss. And we would take this loss amount into account in doing our process accounts. In other words, if we start a process with 1,000 units, we know that if 10% um, of those units are subject to normal loss, then we can already budget for the fact that 100 units will be part of the normal loss and we will end up with 900 units of good output. And if that's the case, then in the previous example, if, one th if, if going into a process with 1,000 units, uh, we emerge at the other side with only 900 good units, but we've accumulated $30,000 of production costs, then we can say effectively that the cost per unit effectively will be 30000 divided by 900 units and not 1,000 units. In other words, 33.3 will be our adjusted average cost per unit, given the fact that there is a normal loss occurring. So if we go back up here to the formula, we can see here the number of units of input, 1,000, minus normal loss, 100, because it's 10% in this case, that makes 900. The cost at the top, total cost of input, $30,000, less scrap value, which in our case is zero. In other words, we didn't say anything about scrap value because the normal loss units did not fetch any scrap value. Okay, so we can set up process account now to reflect the normal losses. The input side is exactly the same as it was before in the initial situation, but the output now is an output to process C, 900 units, and the normal loss units of 100 allow us to reconcile the number of units, only in this case now we know that the $30,000 of costs are associated with the 900 good units, thus giving us uh, our average cost per unit of $33.3. Uh, and of course, the uh, dollar amounts reconcile on both sides of the T-square as, as they should. Now, let's make the uh, situation just a little bit um, more complicated by adding in, in illustration three, the fact that a scrap value can be obtained for those 100 units that were um, lost in the pr uh, production process. The $5 of scrap value 
means now that our scrap value of normal loss units can be deducted from the total cost of inputs. Let's just do that calculation for, for a minute. $30,000 is our total cost of inputs minus scrap value of normal loss input. We have 100 normal loss units. So times 5 will be 500. This will give us in the, in the uh, numerator $29,500. And now in the denominator, as we did before, we have 1,000 units of input minus the normal loss of 100, 900 units. So now we would expect that the value of our good output, the 900 units, will be equal to $29,500 divided by 900 or $32.78, which we have mentioned here. This is the result of this calculation performed here, $32.78. Um, 900 units times $32.78, that's the average cost per unit, gives us $29,000. $500. That's the value of the 900 units. And as we said at the outset, uh, the 100 units of normal loss fetch a scrap value equal to $500. These two amounts add up to $30,000. We're not creating or subtracting um, costs. The costs remain at 30000 The question simply is, how much of those costs do we uh, link with the good output and how much of the costs are associated with the normal loss units. And in this way, we have now balanced our T-square and we have represented accurately from a cost point of view the 900 good units that move on to the process C uh, stage of processing with uh, carrying with them costs of $29,500 and the normal losses are are gone with the $500 uh, which are uh, received. Now the story gets even a bit more exciting if we were to uh, introduce the notion of abnormal losses into the story. Now, the, the idea of an abnormal loss would be losses that are suffered in the processing which exceed the normal loss level. The normal losses being expected or anticipated, we could already uh, take into account in our costs, but the abnormal losses are not expected. Therefore, we, we suffer the full impact of the loss of value. Let's see how that works in our scenario. So here we are starting with 1,000 units into the uh, new process. And we had assumed 100 uh, units lost as normal losses, 10%. And in fact, what happens is that we have a total defect of 150. In other words, our abnormal losses of 50 um, have also to be recorded, leaving only 850 good output. What this happens, what, what, what happens now in our process accounting, in fact, is uh, the left side of the process account remains the same as before. Those are the 1,000 units that are introduced. But notice now that we have three categories to work with in terms of output. We have the output of good units, 850 units. We have the normal loss units and we have the abnormal loss units. We have 850 plus 100 units plus 50 units is 1,000 units. So they're all accounted for. It's just now that they are presented at the output um, stage on the right side of our T-square uh, in three categories. So now we've got to assign values to the three categories. Let's do the easy part first. The normal losses, we said they get a scrap value of $500, therefore they are equal to $500. That's fine. We also know that our total losses 
excuse me, the total uh, production costs are 30,000. This is a fixed number. That doesn't change. And therefore, the only question is we need to divide up the remaining costs between the abnormal loss units and the good units. In this case, we can see quite clearly that the 30,000 total costs minus the 500 um, scrap value from the normal loss leaves 29,500 to be distributed over 850 good units plus 50 abnormal loss units. This is precisely the same calculation as we made upstairs here. In other words, we had a value of $32.78 uh, per unit. And it's for this reason that the abnormal uh, losses are also valued uh, in the same way as the good output. So we multiply 50 units of normal loss by, by $32.78. And we arrive at a total value here. Sorry, I've obscured it a bit. Let me just take this markings away. We arrive at a total value of $1,639. And of course, the 850 units of good output also valued at $32.78 gives us $27,861. Everything adds up to $30,000. So now we've got a proper distribution of costs between the three categories.